Yeah, that, that sounded awful. A lot of it does, yeah. Hello everyone, once again, welcome back to the new music podcast. We've got a pretty stacked week for you this time around. Micah, what album are we taking a look at first? The Voids, like all before you. Yeah, we sure do. This was kind of bad. You think so? But you just reacted to it, so get laid on me. Yeah, just did a reaction video uh, to this. I almost said on the main channel, and then I realized that you're probably watching this on the main channel. Nonetheless, reaction video to this exists. I don't think my thoughts have changed on it much since the reaction video. I basically just said that I'd be following up here. Micah. Did you like the album? Uh, I'll leave that yet to be known. <laughs> going into this like the first song overture i was like all right this could be cool and then like the first part of square wave i was like oh hell yeah right and then the lyrics came in the vocals you mean with the auto-tune and everything yeah 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 that, that sounded awful a lot of it does yeah yeah it's plenty of spots on this album where it just sounds like i saw somebody mention i guess the uh ai was used not only on the cover but the <laughs> vocals too oh yeah it really does sound like that to an extent you're right yeah and the other tracks that don't have those like egregious things about them i don't really care too much about i think my favorite track was prophecy of the dragon and i believe that's that was a single for a while yeah i think it was too that's probably my second favorite that's the most like human sounding track you're right yeah i totally agree that has the most like raw instrumentation to it i usually do single numbers but i give that one a 65 i have a 70 on that track so i'm a little bit more positive on it that's fair normally i would have given it a 70 yeah but it being out for a couple years it's kind of like kind of annoying but has it really i believe so i'm scared to look <laughs> yeah let me let me take a peek i actually have no idea what this rollout looked like oh uh, last year last year it came out yeah that does kind of seem like a long time ago may of last year so yeah it's been like a year and four months so just kind of annoying and the ai cover makes, makes me angry yeah the ai cover is upsetting so i took it out on prophecy of the dragon yeah i think that's kind of understandable one thing that i noticed with the ai stuff that I kind of found interesting, not necessarily as a justification, but maybe as a reason for it. I noticed maybe themes in here, and this is a big maybe because so much of it kind of just feels like fucking Mad Libs, but maybe there's themes in here about like the singularity or things like that, where we're having a meeting of man and machine. You know what I mean? Yeah. It seems like some of the themes are wrapping into that. I guess. I mean, I I could see how they were alluding to that with the cover is of somebody crying metal or whatever the fuck. Somebody said it looks like they're crying cum, but that's not true. <laughs> I mean, it. I can see it, <laughs> unfortunately. It's hard to unsee <laughs> yeah, once see you see that. Out. But Yeah, now I'm seeing it. I was seeing it before, but then I said it out loud, and uh, now it's all I'm thinking about. Yeah, welcome to the cursed knowledge. But no, it does kind of look <laughs> like they're crying, like, metal or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Specifically, or whatever. Or whatever, <laughs> yeah. Wasn't Tyranny good? Of course. I remember liking Tyranny. Yeah, they're all good. Let's do more of that. This isn't good. Tyranny was a lot more raw instrumentation. It had a metal tilt to it more, if I'm remembering properly. And then this feels more like a follow-up to Virtue. Yeah. Virtue seems like the bridge between those two albums to me. Which is fair. I mean, it's fine. I haven't listened to Virtue in a long time. I probably should have beforehand, but... Same, honestly. I meant to come back to it to get a little bit better of a comparison point but i remember a decent chunk of it uh i don't but i wasn't deep into the julian castle blanco rabbit hole that you were <laughs> that's true yeah i was doing reaction videos on these and everything back in the day of course <laughs> yeah I, I mean you had something like pyramid of bones on that album which was like another kind of metal track and then right even before it i'm just looking at the track list right now you had something like curious which was more electronic i believe and you had a lot of that like pairing on that album so it makes this one make a little bit more sense 
but this one's kind of embracing all the wrong things i think yeah yeah it, it just feels like a step in the the wrong direction definitely they named one of their tracks flexorcist and i thought that was hilarious it's a yeah it's a good name <laughs> i do i do fuck with the name i don't know if they meant what i'm thinking but fuck it you know doesn't even really matter i don't think they know what they fucking mean because some of these lyrics like just pull up any song honestly I, i'm on flexorcist i remember in the reaction video i was reading off prophecy of the dragon and some of this is just fucking nonsense <laughs> yeah dude uh, i don't know you give me give me an example so you have the section on i believe that song that starts with i used to be a lounge lizard i think it's that track that's fucking awesome it's not on this track but i don't see a section mm. there's i wait for you like a beast in a zoo i mean that makes some sense in isolation maybe Kind of. I guess. How the Snake King guards the truth until we are prepared. It's not any context for that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Normally that's something I'd be like, fuck. Yeah, dude. Yeah, normally it is kind of fun. Oh, wait, no. I heard him say, I used to be a lounge lizard. I'm listening to Prophecy of the Dragon. Uh, Where'd it go? I heard, it's not in the fucking lyrics on uh, app music. Sure is. But I heard, I heard something, something. I used to be a lounge lizard. Oh, here I found it. East Berlin tastes the fucking decadence. I used to be a lounge lizard. Now look at me. I'm a wizard. Yeah, right. Like, (laughs) and then guitar riff. Yeah, I genuinely had that section screen shot it and read it off and i'm like this is <laughs> what what is happening awesome that's awesome <laughs> it's fun to an extent when he's just kind of saying some shit and i'm not gonna try to say that there's not any meaning behind it if you really wanted to go fucking dial in and try to gather whatever you want from these lyrics it's fine but if they were trying to make a point i think that that point whatever it may be is very convoluted yeah if this was like different people it was king gizzard and lizard wizard just saying this shit randomly i'd be like fuck yeah dude right yeah that doesn't seem like it's supposed to be making some sort of point about ai or having this grander scope of things though you know what i mean yeah it's like when it's just fun that's fun but I feel like I should be gaining some substance. Uh, yeah, when you're trying to be serious, you get a you get a lower score. I guess, yeah. This this album feels like it's taking itself seriously. Yeah, which is- Oh, I keep forgetting about this. I received a comment that said that this was actually intended as a collection of singles more than it was intended as like an album experience. Oh, um I hate that. <laughs> I hate it too because it kind of feels like it isn't the case, but apparently they came out and said that that was the case. I don't know. I don't have the lore. Yeah, that's apparently it. I, I'm confused by it. I'm baffled a little bit. For the end of my positive tangent, at least, is um, Overture. It's my second favorite, and Props to Dragon ends up being my favorite tracks in the album. It's a deep dive into my least favorite, Square Wave, and When Will the Time of These Bastards End? When Will the Time of These Bastards End is, like, a terrible song. Like, actually really bad. Yeah. And the more I listen to it, the more ridiculous it comes across. Yeah. It is a choice. Y- yeah. It sounds like it was mixed by me. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough, yeah. It sounds insane the deep voice mixing thing <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it's ridiculous <laughs> like what is happening oh my god it sounds so silly this album sucks so. not by a lot it, it's just kind of bad yeah overall yeah i think i'm okay with that assessment it doesn't suck super hard but it sucks a, a little bit i think the worst thing about it maybe is looking at the potential of it and seeing what ideas they did bring forward that were interesting and then just how poorly that came together there was so much here that it just needed like a little bit more time to bake in the oven yeah vocals that don't sound ridiculous or something that just is a little bit more fucking tangible song structures that make more sense that's another thing it's hard for me to imagine right after the songs you had done how the song actually flows or like remember any specific portions of it you know what i mean with that yeah this album's fake and it doesn't live inside my brain yeah right as soon as it's off it's like what was that song again this is one where i have to listen to it while talking about it to even know what the fuck is happening anymore yeah no that's totally fair i've spent a decent amount of time with it at this point especially since i edited 
the uh, reaction video, but still. But it's not the worst album of this week. That's our next album, Jamie X. No, I'm <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know if there's much else to say about it. I like again. I guess my opinions on it didn't really change. It still seems like a mess to me, and that's basically what I walk away from it with. What was your overall score? Um, I end up with a 54% on this. I'm on a 44%. Seems perfectly fine. That puts us at a 49. Yeah. 49 yeah i'm shocked to see that that's not really a hot take yeah yeah on either end i don't think right no no i'm not that far in the positive you're not that far in the negative as far as consensus goes because it's currently sitting at a 48 so we're both like five points away up next we have the potentially the best album of the week uh jamie xx coming at us with in waves it's awesome it's a pretty cool fucking album i liked it yeah i think it's really neat i just like it a lot it's just fun uh have you listened to any jamie xx or the xx for that matter in passing never like a deep dive but like i've always like known about tracks here and there mm, gotcha okay uh yeah so this is this is pretty solid yeah yeah i don't know if it lives up to his debut in color I did a little bit of a deep dive, so I listened to all of the albums by VXX as well as... I noticed. Yeah, yeah. I was looking through them, like, trying to remember what tracks, and it was like, your friend's listening to all of this, and it's like, cool. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I went through and rated all of VXX albums. Jamie's music is just more fun. Like, you can see how it gets from one point to the next because he is the producer of the XX's albums. And then this is taking a different approach. It's much more psychedelic. And I think it really embraces a lot of the standard staple things about, like, house music and electronic music. Yeah, I feel like it's more funky than psychedelic. It depends on the moment, I guess in some areas yeah yeah the avalanche is featured on this track yeah all you children that's a great song fuck them kids terrible song who'll be scared on the album you're a liar you're right my favorite track is breather really yeah oh that's pretty good i like all you children better i also like life better oh those are my second and third favorites nice okay cool we're basically on the same page what'd you think of batty on the floor i thought that track was good i don't know how to talk i gave it a seven out of ten i have a hard time describing what that means in english human being words right yeah i feel like maybe we don't talk about enough electronic music on here or there's just not as much to discuss i don't know no no no. i'm i'm talking about the seven out of ten rating oh i see that track was a bop yeah if you're gonna talk about it being more funky than psychedelic or however you worded that that's that's the one that one's got a nice hit little Ow. bouncy groove i have a hot take on that track i like that one a lot less than everyone else did really oh yeah i guess so yeah it has an 88 user score and i give it a 70 oh and here i thought people wouldn't be as fond of life as i am but people like that one a lot too oh life too life also has an 88 i gave life an 80 oh i gave that one a 100 oh yeah i like life a whole lot i also like all you children a whole lot i mean honestly most of it i like a whole lot daffodil was fucking fantastic uh i think it makes a lot of sense that panda bear of animal collective is featured on there fair yeah yeah i'm not a big house guy uh as i have mentioned on the is it cross justice justice is their fucking band name the the, the cross albums guys yeah justice yeah i i'm not a huge house guy and that hasn't changed is justice considered house it's like the same vein i guess it says yeah technique it's, it's fucking dance music it's the same audience definitely kind of in that same vein that one had some really super nice little grooves on it some fun ideas and that's basically how i'm feeling about this one i do think that it flows really nicely as an album experience too yeah i think the album experience is nice i'm not like shaken as heavily as everyone else might be but i'm pretty close i'm not far away this album definitely has room to grow on yeah yeah would you say you expect it to i do okay some other tracks that stood out to you every single weekend oh yeah 
as my least favorite. Same. Oh, it's an interlude. It's kind of an interlude. It's not listed as one. And, I mean, it goes over a minute at least. Yeah, yeah that's, that was my least favorite. I didn't know this was an interlude. My bad, dog. Uh, it only kind of is, so whatever. Yeah. Otherwise, everything else, I have a lot of sevens and eights littered throughout the album. And I have one 100, which I put on Breather. I love that track a lot. Really? Yeah, it was a little weird about it. I really, really liked it. I mean, I'm glad you liked it. I liked it too, just not that much. Not quite that much. I loved it. It is a really cool song, though. I, I like the narration with it. It's a certified hood classic. That's one way to put it. Breathe. <laughs> breathe. 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 <laughs> like yeet reference? If you say breathe in your track, I'll love it. Is this a yeet reference? <laughs> Honestly, yeet... Yeet needed a feature on this. Where's the Yeet feature? He <laughs> should have been on Breathe. Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real. <laughs> no, I think that just as far as electronic music goes, this is a fucking blast to listen to. And it's got that like trippy little edge to it that kind of pushes it over the edge into being excellent for me. All right. There's just a lot to chew on that's super nice on the ears i will say though i like in color better have you i think i asked but... I, yeah i i need to listen to it again to rate it but i remember liking in color in color is a fucking banger of a record that one i recently gave a 91 to oh shit yeah i recently skimmed it again i was like all right i gotta come back to this and like a deep dive i kind of have the same things to say about that one but it's less trippy and more just like fun electronic noises i guess the covers fit i'll i'll just say it like that like this trippy fucking optical illusion album cover feels like it fits the album to me i got you yeah which is gonna give me a headache in editing unfortunately but r.i.p your noggin yeah i'll probably just like fucking tint it black while i'm editing so fuck <laughs> but um i don't think i have too much else to say besides Good job, Jamie XX. Yeah, good shit, man. One thing that I did want to mention, I looked on his, uh, like, merch store, just happened to take a peek, and yep. he was selling a puzzle with the album cover. Oh, dear God. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately, my reaction was, what a weird piece of merch. And then I thought about it, and I'm like, oh my God, that would be hell to assemble. <laughs> You like tedious things that piss you off all the time? <laughs> I mean, it Wall would be so it. difficult because it's all just black and white and the whole thing's a fucking optical illusion. Oh my god, that would be a terrible task. But I appreciate I, the innovative merch nonetheless. I just realized that it's been nine years since In Colors. Yeah, and even longer than that maybe since the last XX album. Oh, never mind. I see you was 2017. My bad. Anyways, what'd you give this? I gave this an 81. Whoa. I gave this a 47. <laughs> No, you fucking didn't. I gave it a 75. You gave it a 75? Yeah. Seems low, but that's fair. I'll give it to you. Uh, you know what's funny is I'm three points below the user score, and you're three points above the user score. Yeah, so we balance out exactly at the user score. True. Which, did we not do that with the other one? Oh, we're 1% off on the voids. Yeah. We were mighty close. That's crazy. All right, well, I guess we're the fucking voice of a people this week or some fucking shit. Mixtape Pluto! Bitch, I'm boss, I call a shot. Swear a few bands at the wrong spot. Why you been trying to rock poppin' at the hotel? Trap not trying. Yeah, yeah, I'm flappin' not trying. I'm swimmin' in the end. I'm thud in the thud. Millions out of the trap, so amazing. I can surf on the tsunami when the wave hit. Yup. Yup. Yeah, future sure did make a... If you, future dropped again. Yup. If young Metro don't trust you, he can release way too much music. <laughs> I would... I'm not <laughs> sure if Metro had anything on this one. Let's see. I don't fucking care. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no. This is like... It's a bunch of, like, names I don't really recognize on production. And then fucking ATL Jacob, Southside, and Wheezy. The weekend's on here. What? I, I was messing with it around. I was looking at the fucking Metro movement in the future, and I saw first track, The Weeknd. So I was like, oh, The Weeknd's on here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, no features, actually. Before we get to the elf in the room, let's say positive things. 
First three tracks, ops. I like them. First four, you know what, fuck it. Eh. They're not bad. The fourth one, eh, but it wasn't bad. I'm not that big on Ski or Ready to Cook Up. I do really like those first two. And then going down, I like Ocean a lot. I like Surfing a Tsunami a whole lot. That's like really good. And then I would say the same thing for Lost My Dog. Th- those two are really good. I think. You said Ocean? Yeah. I agree with you on Ocean. I liked Teflon Don. It was my favorite. Teflon Don, I think it's like third for me, maybe. That's fair. A uh, Little Demon and Ski and Ocean are all like tied for me. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. And then everything else is just kind of okay. Didn't care for surfing on a tsunami? I like that one a lot. Uh, I gave that one a 65. So like it was more notable out of like the second half of the album. I think I was just exhausted. That's totally fair. That one kind of felt like a breath of fresh air to me because the production's really nice. And I don't think that's present on a lot of the album. True. Nope. That's why I have a lot of sixes and fives. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about something that's real, rated real low. Uh, the elephant in the room, if you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Pluto Ski. <laughs> what a stupid fucking <laughs> song, dude. <laughs> What happened? Future, Future, go go back to Young Metro. (laughs) Bro really just like uh, is drunkenly mumbling into the mic by the sounds of it. Dude's fucked up at the studio. Yeah. What happened? Like, (laughs) I want to know. And why did he press send on that? (laughs) It's so crazy. It's so bad. It's like comically bad. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, Riding with Satan again is like the only like legible fucking... Yeah. And it's like, bro, wait, go back. What are you talking about? Sorry. I'm at the bars. I'm thugging again. Oh, yeah. I'm blessing. I'm blah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm flipping. I'm fl- Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that just comes off like, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's awesome. I fucking hate this. I'm going to, we're going to bang this in the car. We're hanging out. <laughs> that was my thought. Exactly. Is that it is so awesome because of how bad it is. I love the song. It's so bad. Yeah. It's, it's really a, uh, so bad. It's good moment. So bad. It's fun. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Whatever you want to say, but I, I will say I fucking laughed out loud uh when that that hook bit came on when he's just like he sounds asleep it sounds like when you start waking someone up and then they're like i'm awake like (laughs) you know what i mean this is how i sounded when my leg was broken and i was on oxycodone yeah kind of oxycodone yeah because like i'm thinking like throws on something probably probably but he had to have been sober at some point in between when he recorded this and when he sent it out does it really have to be though i mean at some point i would imagine you know that passed through multiple hands before it got to us and nobody was like hey maybe don't sound like that it was so bad they had you yeah the next track some one of the opening lines is motherfuckers don't even be appreciating this shit but it's cool Uh, yeah, you know, maybe I don't fully appreciate it. Maybe we just don't get it. Maybe Future is on a maybe. different level. Maybe this is a new wave of rap. Yeah. We're gonna look back in 10 years and be like, I can't believe we didn't get that. You know, ironically enough, that is kind of how it works with Future, though. He does predict what's coming, which I guess makes his name fit all the more... <laughs> mask off fuck it mask off and then COVID happened (laughs) yeah no I just mean like if we're talking about what has been referred to as mumble rap before this point he was kind of doing it before everybody else was doing it to an extent anyways like he was on the come up with that whole thing with how trap sounds now and then this is mumble rap taken to a very literal extent like he is literally mumbling like there's no way around that fuck yeah dude uh fun fact is this is his first mixtape in six years yeah hasn't done a mixtape in a while and i gotta say i was pretty excited to see what a new mixtape would look like from him because his mixtapes are some of my favorite projects from him yeah monsters fucking hot yep best trap album of all time which i guess it's technically a mixtape so maybe it's not the best trap album of all time but if we're gonna call it an album i'd say monsters the best trap album of all time that's kind of what i was hoping for unfortunately the results are heavily underwhelming oh yeah no dirty sprites a banger <laughs> no mercy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking old i want these album covers i want them i want to own them i bet dirty sprite has vinyl I bet it exists what the fuck is happening <laughs> <laughs> he's looking at the old 
fucking bling era looking uh future mixtapes that have ridiculous album covers i love this yeah this is awesome astronaut status yeah those are mixtape covers right there that is that like fucking dat piff mixtape era then you you go to like after that same year 2013 no sleep and then monster and the beast mode where it's like more hype era of things and then now you have today where it's just a picture of some dude's house but purple i mean i really like this album cover i feel super hard yeah seeing that also increased my hype for this even more because of how gloomy it looks it's like i really wanted another monster project you know what i mean especially 10 years after monster almost 10 years to the day yeah 10 years a month in a week off that's so true yeah it feels like this was going to be rap album of the year contender and instead it's just horrifically underwhelming yeah it's such a weird enigma of an album this one like i don't know how this happened um i don't know how we ended up with plutoski even existing and the rest of this i don't know why it happened (laughs) plutoski's awesome you know out of everything i think i'm the most glad plutoski exists though because yeah. it's so stupid. <laughs> yeah, like, nothing dropped here that was, like, gonna fucking rock my jimmies more than Plutoski. Like, over time, Teflon Don's gonna drop back down to a 70 for me. Plutoski will always be a 10 <laughs> <Yeah>. out of 100. <laughs> <laughs> I have a 5 on it because of the so bad it's good factor. It's a 0 and a 10 at the same time. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't have too much other to say. There's only one song on this on this big statement with Tosky. You know, you're kind of right. There's a couple other tracks I think we went through already that are good and like they're yeah. perfectly fine playlist material for future songs. But I mean, there's nothing here that's essential to his discography other than Plutoski being the moment that it is. Yeah, dude. Yeah, wild fucking album. Mostly mid, but disappointing. But uh, it's something. Yep. 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 Fifty-seven. Fifty-eight. Whoa. Yeah. All right. Let's re-record that. Let's agree so the math's nice. Oh, actually, I just re-looked at it and I have a fifty-nine. Oh, damn. I was gonna say I rounded it down. It's like round up. No, nah, that's fine. All right. Uh, so we end up with a fifty-eight on that. Yeah. 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 What do you know? Oh, and uh, <laughs> Katy Perry's one hundred. Micah, Micah has taken the liberty of filling in one hundred <laughs> on Katy Perry's one forty-three. Of course. World in your- Yeah, perfect album, right? Yeah, segueing into that, uh, Gorgeous is a zero because Kim Petras is on it. Uh, the first two tracks are tens because they suck, and then everything else is threes. <laughs> Besides Lifetimes, I gave Lifetimes a four. Honestly, I think the Kim Petras song is one of the better ones. I don't remember this album, bro. You know, it's really high and a little drunk when I heard it. Yeah, so that's actually funny that you mentioned that because I noticed something about it. It gets a little bit better if you're drunk, and it gets a little bit better if you're driving. So if you drive drunk to this <laughs> album, then you're combining those two things. <laughs> And then it might actually be good. So that means that you have to commit a felony in order for this album to be good. Hence why the score is so low. I hate this. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> no, it's it's just really bad. <laughs> um, yeah. It sounds like 10 years ago. In all the wrong ways, too. Yeah, and 10 years ago sucked. Yeah. The pop music of when we were growing up kind of fucking blew and honestly Katy Perry was part of the reason <laughs> don't tell it's my father-in-law apparently he loves uh one of the Katy K- K- Perry songs I mean she had songs like there was some good stuff in there yeah you know I'm looking back at her discography I had no idea she dropped ever besides just like a couple singles uh yeah there would be the singles that just like ruled the entire world when they would come out when I was about 10 years old I remember that being the case and and I have so much needless animosity towards the song Firework for that reason. I don't even remember the fireworks. I'm trying to. It's just not coming up. I'd sing it, but I'd die of cringe. Oh, her first single in in 2007, You're So Gay. Yeah, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. She, what is she this? Has, uh, I don't know. I'm curious. <laughs> oh, she has California Girls and fucking I Kissed a Girl. Yeah, you would know those. Yeah. Firework. All right. I, I remember. These. Yeah, I had no idea she looked that 
way. I do not picture Katy Perry looking like early Katy Perry does. She has like the scene girl haircut. That's how I think of her. Yeah, I didn't know. I saw this new look and I was like, eh, it's not from her. This is pretty much how I picture her, honestly. But regardless, uh, what? Oh yeah, I'm his, he's mine has a fucking like interpolation of uh, a song I can't think of. and I couldn't remember it. Does it really? Yeah, the intro. I'm his, he's mine. Listen, listen to that. I forget. In... Um, I'm just looking up the who sampled. Maybe? I don't think we can say that anyway, so, um, well. Yeah, it is, it is. Okay. Okay, well, it's got a fucking parentheses, she's homeless, la da da dee da da, basement boy stripped to the bone mix. Yeah, okay, so yeah, there's there's an interpolation there. I don't think I was even familiar with it, and if I did, it went over my head. I'm having difficulty look at me knowing you don't know anything what are you a music reviewer fucking idiot no, kid. yeah i'm fucking dumb as shit apparently i don't fucking know bro uh, most of the times that i listen to this i was trying to tune it out though so maybe i would have recognized it i want to know what you're so gay sounds like the apple music cover for you're so gay sound looks like shit i don't give a fuck about this album anymore now i'm curious in the kitty Perry's history how how was she popular uh Easy pop songs. I guess if you throw everything at the wall, something will stick. I mean, it doesn't need to be good. That's the thing. I Can we finally stop pretending that her old work was good? Like, I'm sorry, I'm just going to be a hater real quick. I was shocked to find out that the internet kind of likes a lot of her old singles. Because I was so annoyed by them when I was a child. I would fucking hate it when she dropped because I'd be like, oh great another fucking Katy Perry song that I'm not going to be able to avoid for the next five months because my mother's going to turn on the radio and then it'll be there immediately. I Kissed a Girl can can shut up. <laughs> Probably one of the better ones, honestly. Who fucking even knows? Oh, yeah. I do listen to them while we're talking about them. What's the other one that I fucking remembered? Fucking forgot it already. Either way, this fucking album, it sounds like her early era in a way, just a more washed up, even more like sterilized and generic version of it. So it's just kind of all of the worst things. It's a lot of elements smashed together that are fucking terrible. Apparently her last fucking five albums were just okay. Yeah. And apparently it's new dream was good. Uh, sure. So I don't know what happened between here and there, but cut it out. <sighs> In general, this is so soulless. Do you know the whole thing with uh, Dr. Luke as well? Because that's kind of worth bringing up. Nope. Okay, so Dr. Luke is a producer with some pretty serious allegations. I assume you knew that much? Nope. First time ever hearing about who Dr. Luke is. Whoa. That's kind of crazy. I'm envious. Yeah, so he has some uh, pretty terrible allegations from women. And then to turn around and have him produce a track called Woman's World that has this, like, pseudo-feminist vibe about it is really weird. Oh, so that track's actually a zero. My score gets lower. I mean, it doesn't sound like a zero. It sounds like something that's just in one ear and out the other, I guess. Yeah. And that's kind of the problem with most of this, is most of this is just in one ear and out the other. Yeah, when the highest critic score is a 50, you're not paying them enough. I feel like that is because of the Dr. Luke stuff, to be honest, because let's take that context away from it. Then you know that there would be fucking critics gobbling this down. There would have to be. Yeah. They can't even defend this now because of the fucking Dr. Luke thing. But if we're going to talk about some more weird collaborations for totally different reasons, uh, what the fuck is 21 Savage and J.I.D. doing here? They want that Katy Perry money. Yeah, I really hope uh, J.I.D. got an enormous bag for this well they were also on the eminem album so i'm just worried about gid yeah he has been doing a run of appearances that is just all terrible because it was mgk then eminem and now this and it makes me scared for his career although i will say kendrick kind of did the same thing okay all right i didn't know that yeah do you remember all that no. He was on an Imagine Dragons song and a Taylor Swift song and a Maroon 5 song. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That 21 Savage verse on here also, it's a very strange placement to come right after the woman empowerment song. <laughs> what are you saying about my boy 21, 21, 21? I'm saying he says some kind of misogynistic shit as yeah, is typical does. of trap stuff so i mean it's like it's kind of par for the course whatever but it's it's Valid. a very stark contrast 
Yeah, I mean, I. What are you doing here? <laughs> Get out of here. I don't, know, I don't know what to say. Yeah, and the song sounds ridiculous. I'm looking at who he's, what he's been on this past like two years, and <laughs> he's on Diddy's last album. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This circle is looking more and more grim. <laughs> oh, no. 21 Savage, also recently on a Drake song. We should probably keep that in mind, too. Yep. He was also on a Childish Gambino album that came out a while ago, though, so that's not the count. Uh, did Usher do something bad? I think so. Uh, besides Drop Coming Home? I think so. <laughs> I don't know. This this inner uh, circle is, is looking grim, but, I mean, I guess that doesn't really have anything to do with the music, but there's not that much to say about the music, right? I don't know. What do you got? Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, a 25 on the album. I have a 23, and it's because Wonder and Gimme Gimme are literally sickening to me. And most of the rest is, like, really boring, but just kind of in one ear and out the other, I guess. Valid. Gimme Gimme is sickening to me as well. Not Wonder? I think by that point, I was mentally checked out. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> like, it's, they got the fucking child choir chorus on there, and it's, like, fake Hallmark card optimism sentiment. Brother, my highest score check was a 40. Well, same, but that one's, like, a zero, and then it went on the worst songs I've ever heard playlist. That's hilarious. I don't think my brain got that far. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lifetimes is the... I actually have a five on. I'm unoffended by that one entirely. I think there are songs on here that would be fine if you just, like, heard them in public, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But the 24s are totally right. Yeah. One thing real quick. Did you notice how abruptly every song ends? Yeah. It's so sudden. It goes from one song to the next and, like, nothing happens. I don't even know, man. But let's please stop talking about this album. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we might want to. Let's, let's talk about something else. Yeah, rap cats. Catnip, volume one. Sent to us by one of the three producers in the mix here, Malnisi. Thank you, Malnisi. Yeah, uh, thank you for sending that to us. We also have um, Lucid Screaming, a different producer on a few tracks, and then Kyle Cahill. I, I want to say is how it's pronounced anyways. Uh, album covers a 10. Oh, yeah. Cat with sunglasses, cat smoking cigarettes. And then just black cat. Uh, just a third cat? Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Obviously, I think... Each of the cats is supposed to represent one of them. Malnisi's the black cat. Yeah, he has the, the profile picture and everything of the black cat. I'm not sure which one is Kyle Cahill and which one is Lucid Screaming, but that's awesome to just have cat representations of yourself. Yep, that's awesome. But my one thing that I thought was kind of funny about this album is uh, it's called Rap Cats, and I don't hear any rapping. No, but it's hip-hop beats, so I guess I get it. Yeah, it's it's beats to chill and vibe to. Cats can't rap. It's just a simple fact of life. All they do is meow. What about Meow the Jewels? What about Meow the Jewels? Oh, that's so true. <laughs> Maybe cats can <laughs> rap. <laughs> yeah, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Um, if cats could spit bars, they'd be spitting bars. We'll say, we'll, we'll say, if it was more common of an occurrence. Okay, all right, all right. You're on thin ice, fucker. <laughs> but what are some thoughts and prayers about this album? It's, it's honestly awesome. It's very good. And I love it a lot. And as far as instrumental hip hop stuff goes, this is pretty creative. And you've got three minds who are pretty creative, clearly going at it here. Uh, and just just putting out some awesome tracks pretty much like everything that i'm hearing and it's all just very sweet and very nice on the ears and sometimes gets a little adventurous in really good ways that's how i feel about it basically yeah i, I thought it was all right there was a couple tracks uh blue jay oh shit so much to give and yeah yeah i know where i wasn't like blown away like it was it was good not great but i was just kind of like yeah this is happening in my ears hmm I guess. I don't think that it's really trying to... No, it's it's not. It doesn't have, but for me, it was just kind of like, yeah, it's here. I mean, it's all just kind of meeting all of the standards in a really nice way. You know what I mean? I think it's just meeting all of the standards. 
I I guess, yeah. Like, it's just kind of following the rubric. Otherwise, I have a lot of sevens and a couple eights throughout here. I Yeah, I like this more than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> I knew you would. Shut It Down was one of my more favorite Dora tracks. Kind of sounded a little bit like, I don't know if I want to say Early Flying Lotus. Because it's not weird in that same way. It sounds like they're getting there, you know what I mean? I could see a Flying Lotus comparison. Yeah. All right, then I'll use it. But it seems like they're getting there, and they're they're doing their thing. Uh, intermission was hilarious with the Monty Python reference. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I loved the intermission. That was fun. I, I liked that. Yeah. Tiny Tim and Forbidden Love were also bop. I I really like those ones. Yeah. Tiny Tim is probably the most adventurous song on the project. I think. Yeah, and I appreciate that. I feel like they should um, be not afraid to explore the space that they are given, for better or for worse. Yeah, yeah, that one does a lot. Like, it, it kind of goes all over the place. You got that, like, choir sample, and then it chops it up. I don't know who produced what track, by the way. I, I decided to keep that knowledge not known to myself until right now. Mm-hmm. I see. I wanted to say my thoughts and then look at who did what. Yeah, there's two different versions of the track list. And honestly, I think there might be one or two songs that don't exist on both. But this is different on Bandcamp than it is on streaming. I listened to it on Bandcamp. I listened to it on streaming. Yeah. There was 13 tracks on streaming. There's 14 on Bandcamp. Is All My Life not on the streaming one? No. Weird. I liked All My Life, so that's kind of a shame. So yeah, there's two different versions. I don't know why, but on Bandcamp, it's split up for each producer having each section. It goes, the first section is Lucid Screaming, then the second section is Kyle Cahill, and then the third section is Malnese, and it goes like that. You're gonna look at my favorite tricks. and 11, which was Forbidden Love and Tiny Tim. Who did those ones? Malnese did Forbidden Love, and Kyle Cahill did Tiny Tim. Yep. So I've got favorites um, in each of the three camps. Yeah, yeah, those two are great. My favorites, otherwise, I really loved At Sundown and Forbidden Love on here. Those ones are great. I also really loved It's So Profound. That one is so sweet. Hell yeah. Yeah, the way vocals are treated on probably all three of those songs that I just mentioned reminds me a lot of how, like, Slush Wave and, um, like, Mallsoft vocals are treated just any of those like kind of weird little vaporwave niches where when stuff's like down pitched and gets all sentimental with it like that i i love that shit hell yeah dude hell yeah dude uh some of it's just kind of some like lo-fi beats stuff some of it is a little bit more adventurous and i think all of it is just super nice I definitely hope they decide to adventure a little more. I, I felt some of the tricks were kind of like, yeah, it's here. It's like, it's okay. I'm not mad at anything. Everything's good. But from what I've heard from at least not easy before, I expect just a little more in some spots. I don't know. It is different very much so than... It is different. Yeah. I will give him that. A totally different bag than what we saw on To Cause Harm earlier this year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one was scary. This one's happy. Yeah. It's happy cat music. I don't really want to pick a favorite as to which one of them had the most tracks I liked. Oh, oh, between the three? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has to be Malnese. I think so. I think they all did. They all did equally as good. Yeah. But Malnese's our favorite because he was a cat first. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know the cat lore. I looked a little bit. Kyle Cahill does some, like, plunderphonic stuff, which I haven't listened to yet, but I will do soon. That makes sense. Lucid Screaming has an album dropping this year, October 4th. Oh, cool. Should we throw that on? Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? But he does more, like, instrumental hip-hop and also plunderphonics, I guess. So he dropped an album this year already. Does not have a genre tag, so I have no idea. But the album cover is fucking interesting. Yeah. Hardest motherfucker in this Mazda. Oh, what? That is a Lucid Screaming uh, album name. That's badass. It looks like Lucid Screaming uh, started this year. Nice. And he has already made one, two, three, four, five, six albums. That's crazy. That's a lot of albums. And it's got a seventh one dropping this year. Jesus Christ. Prolific. Prolific. I'm impressed that Malnese can do the fucking scary sounding shit on Two Cause Harm and then go to this like bright, sunny, sentimental mood so quickly. Like just such a quick turnaround on that. He used all the anger. It's gone. It's all happy vibes now. It's all it's all cats and hip hop beats. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is just really chill, though, and it's sweet, and 
it's very well made. There's a lot of music like this, but this is some of the better music like this that I've heard. That's how I feel, I guess. Got you. What was your cool score here, buddy? I have an 85 on this. I have a 69. You're that low on it? That is criminal. Yeah. Rip. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll give it to you in that it's not necessarily doing something new, but it doesn't need to. It doesn't have to. Not legally required to. You get an 85? Yeah. Which I think is the same score I gave to Cause Harm. That is entirely unintentional. I like them equally for different reasons. So 77 is our... Yeah, 77 is where we balance out, so that's how we're feeling, I guess. I recommend wholeheartedly you go give it a give it a shot if you're into instrumental hip-hop stuff. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Moving on to uh, something that I love and that you loved, I think, because you showed it to me. I had a whole art. Kaizo Slumber coming at us with a tummy ache. Somebody get that man a Tums. <laughs> Get this man a thumbs. <laughs> this was not as good as How Are We Feeling Today, unfortunately. You don't think so? No, I, I loved How Are We Feeling Today. Oh, that's fair, yeah. I kind of find both of them interesting, but not necessarily perfect. And I think this one's just, like, different, right? Uh, it's just more more into the, like, metal, I guess, is the word I'm going to use. Aspects of this album. Yeah. Which is cool. More, like, hardcore stuff. I like the hardcore moments on How Are We Feeling Today, but this is missing that pizzazz. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that, that pizzazz isn't here. Now, sure, the fucking album cover is somebody making out with the mannequin, but it just doesn't feel doesn't feel the same. I lost my fucking track rating, but I think I Don't Know was my favorite track. My favorite track on here ended up pretty easily being either The Closer, if you wanted to pick it, or I think my pick would actually go to An Exercise in Self-Preservation. I liked that one a fucking lot. Yeah, that track was a banger too. I can't remember my exact favorite, but that one was definitely up there. Yeah. This new wave of digital hardcore been coming out here recently is weird, and I love it. It's very weird. It's not just Machine Girl doing it good. Now other people are doing it good. Yeah, you know, I didn't really make a Machine Girl connection, but I guess you could kind of draw a certain line there of similarity. Yeah, not Machine Girl today. Machine Girl in 2017. Yeah. Because Machine Girl now is more, like, synthy than it is um, hardcore. But it still ha- has those elements. Right, yeah. I think they have a formula going here. And that's my one critique with this. Is In a way, it sounds like the same song eight times. Yeah. 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 But I will give you that. the formula's cool. The second genre tag is new metal. It's kind of new metal. There's rap and screamed heavy vocals. So that's kind of the things you need for it, I guess. I think that the heavier portions of this album are more reminiscent of beat down hardcore or something like that. Yeah. Than like, yeah, anything in the new metal vein. I agree. It gets really heavy and it's all balanced out over these little sparkly keys and shit these these little ambient sections that are so cute and so innocent and then it gets just fucking demolished with enormous metalcore riffs yes sir i feel like bullet hell music is what i used to describe how are we feeling today and i feel like we have more of that here it's just a solid album yeah i guess so it is the same song eight times but it's a pretty good song it's a really good song <laughs> i like it it's got cool ideas it gets a little a little much after eight times but fuck it yeah and you do have a couple of interludes in there that experiment a decent bit and are pretty fun tracks so that breaks up the tedium of it a little bit as well yeah i'm just sad that we peaked at how are we feeling today that album's awesome yeah i think that that one was maybe a little bit more creative and this one's a little bit more formulaic i'll say that much yeah that, that's my biggest complaint here is that is you just doing it man it's not like how are we feeling today we had tracks like you know, where it's just the fucking, like, little animal fucking crossing dudes with demonic screeching over it. That's true. That pizzazz is gone. That was just, like, a, a hardcore album, but you can't play guitar, so you have a synthesizer. 
<laughs> well, there's definitely guitar. Like, this shit would go hard as fuck live. Oh, yeah. Well, it's it's a MIDI guitar. Do you think so? I don't know. I feel like that's a real guitar. Probably. Yeah. No, this would go hard as fuck live. I do want to be in the pit. Maji goes hard as well. I forgot to, forgot to mention that, correct? Yeah, the one, two, three go in the beginning there was not fucking around. <laughs> that no, track not. fucking goes. He gets into, like, almost a sludgy fucking shenanigans into that opener. Yeah, the opener grew on me. I didn't like it at first. Yeah, tell me, the, like, the title track in the opener, yeah. I see that being people's favorite if you're a fan of this already. Really? That's what I'm seeing in, like, the reviews, I guess. Like, if people giving it, like, 90s and shit. That's a least favorite contender for me. Because I don't like the progression of that one that much. Yeah, I'm not too terribly hot on it either. Yeah. There's a lot of bangers, though. <laughs> so many bangers it's a banger machine yeah it's a real gauntlet of intense heavy crazy fucking music but it's a little bit less eclectic than the last one yeah it doesn't have the pizzazz yeah i I get what you're saying with the pizzazz now i guess i'm kind of just looking at this as a different thing i mean like i want a different thing i want i want that again i think they found what works so they're sticking with it but a little bit more experimentation would kind of be nice which would be an insane sentence if this is the only thing you've heard from kaizo slumber i will say that much Oh, yeah, you, you'd you be like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you'd be like, what do you mean? <laughs> I will appreciate that there is more lyrics. Like, they're more audible here, and there's just more of them. Yeah. I liked the lyrics in How Are We Feeling Today, but I liked everything else, too. Honestly, um, I really liked some lyrics, too. I liked the lyrics of Content Bro. It's an interesting take on the whole thing, I guess. I liked the lyrics on An Exercise of Self-Preservation as well. Yeah, those lyrics are hot. Yeah, it's inspirational in all the right ways. Yeah, dude. It's like quippy and sad, dickhead. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay to be sad, dickhead. <laughs> Anyways, time to crowd kill. Yeah, man. I didn't even think about seeing this live and how fucking hard that would go. God, picturing those sludgy, disgusting fucking riffs on IDK and just how much that would hit in that context. That's why IDK is one of my favorites. Yeah. Also, I love the I love the B tag. Never change. Yeah, <laughs> shit bangs. I do wish it was a little more diverse and they weren't just sticking with a formula. But other than that, I really have no complaints. Same. What was your score? I have an eighty-four on this. I have a seventy-four. You have a seventy-four. That's crazy. Yeah, I wasn't in the eighty range for this. I am just having a blast with it. Me too. And enjoying enjoying my time with it. Me too. But it doesn't hold a candle to how we're feeling today. I don't know if I would say that. Like I said, I'm just kind of looking at them as two different things. If you compare them to each other, then I can totally see where you're coming from. But I guess I'm just not. And it's been a second since I've listened to that album too. That's valid. Oh my god, you are in the top five for people on this album. Really? You were number five. Huh. You were the fifth high score. Is there any 100s? Yeah, there's one 100. That person's valid. They're having the amount of fun I wish I was having. Oh, they gave the dare 100 as well. So they, they are having more fun than we are. <laughs> yeah. No, that's kind of based. <laughs> What's our total score then? 79? 79. We're sitting with this one at a 79, yes. Hey, well, this is a pretty solid episode. Yeah, very diverse set of scores, that's for sure. Yeah, with Katy Perry at the low with 24, and oh my god, Kaiser Slumber at the high with 79. I thought for sure Jamie XX was going to be at the high. Uh, yeah, only by a mere 1%. And then you actually have a uh, close third with 77 third on Rapcats. Rapcats. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And then it falls off a fucking cliff. Sorry, Malneasy, that we put you so close to the voids like this. My <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah. All the more reason we don't really do the scoreboard anymore. Sometimes it just looks fucking yeah. cursed like that. But yeah, some great yeah. stuff this week. Some stuff worth checking out. Everything's linked below. Definitely, in particular, go give some love to that Rap Cats album, you know? Sure. Give some love to some underground artists. We'll link everybody. Oh, and... I meant to mention this, but Kaizo Slumber is actually currently under the same label Viper used to be. So, take that information with what you will. That will also be linked below. Oh, I didn't know this was the fucking label that Viper was on. There's a lot of weird shit on this label. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? The Viper comp is still on what, there. I, I think he took most of it down, but... I scrolled too far, and now I'm in fucking Sonic.exe 
fan <laughs> core. Oh, God. It's a fucking live album. Excuse me? What? Also, fun fact for anybody who listened this long, take a look at an XX album cover right next to a Jamie XX album cover, and uh, you'll see what I mean, and it's cool. I'm sending you in Discord. Do you see what I mean? No. Okay. I mean, oh, oh, because it's Jamie, and then, yeah. Okay, so that's his, that's his part of the X. Yeah, the little rectangle is his part of the X. I, I noticed that earlier today, and I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. Because he uses the triangle on everything. Yeah. Or not triangle, rectangle on that's everything. Really yeah. Yeah. It's a triangle. It's two triangles. Two trucks having sex. Two trucks having sex. That's all for this one. We'll catch you next time. Micah, do you have anything to say to the people before we go? Um, congratulations, this is a 10. And if you don't think it's a 10, uh, unsubscribe. And if you weren't subscribed, subscribe. And then unsubscribe. That's all. Say your bit, dude. Shiloh. <laughs> Shiloh, for the love of God, say your bit. <laughs> You're you laughing over there, you fucker. <laughs> this has gone on too long. All right, I'm ending the call. That's pretty wholesome, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>